The current Booga flu has forced many states to issue a shelter-in-place order, which could mean that the police and National Guard will be making sure you stay at home and stop proving to the world that sneeze guards aren't just for the buffet. Many patriots are terrified at the notion of martial law, but we at Tundra Tactical have a few facts, tips, and tricks to make your experience just a little bit more enjoyable. Here is the Tundra Tactical Guide to Making the Best Out of Martial Law. So stay tuned, thanks for watching, and let's start the show. How many of you are totally jealous that Matt from Demo Ranch has his own Humvee? The word is getting out, and yes, it is absolutely true that you do not need a set of keys to operate a Hummer. As secure as one of these bad boys will ever get is a literal cable around the steering wheel with a padlock. Anybody who has spent any time in a military motor pool will know that the preferred method of removing said padlock is a bolt cutters, because some idiot keeps taking the keys off the logbook for some reason, and a vast majority of military vehicle keys are in the same place all my left-handed gloves go to in the time between me taking them off and needing another pair. Now, for the cost of nothing, you too can own your own personal military-grade 4x4. Excellent! <laughs> the bad news is the fiberglass doors offer no insulation, the heater probably doesn't work, it'll break down every 4 to 500 miles, and going any speed over 50 miles an hour will feel like you are re-entering the Earth's atmosphere in a shopping cart. Pros and cons, folks. Pros and cons. If you're one of those people who leave rifles and ammunition next to every door in your house to fight off the National Guard when they come to take your guns away for public safety, I assure you that this is one of the times that your mother-in-law is actually right about you being a paranoid weirdo. What? Keep in mind that people like Eric, through a series of critical administrative errors, are actually leading these guardsmen. If some hypothetical order to disarm the public ever does come to fruition, it's much more likely that those carrying out an order like this are going to be far too tired and lazy to actually search for your home. And in the event that Eric does come knocking on your door, he'll be much more likely to be impressed with your tricked out AR or insult you to your face for choosing a high point for your best option for home defense. Remember that a lot of your local National Guardsmen are patriots just like you, except they have a part-time job that allows them access to all that multicam you can't afford. I mean, come on, do you really expect Bob from the VFW to be down there intentionally violating the Constitution? Nah, I didn't think so either. Have you ever wanted to fire a real automatic weapon? Yep. Ah, sure, you can find RPKs and 249s in the civilian market, but when they're semi-automatic only, Man, the cool factor just doesn't live up to the hype. If you were smart enough to stock up on energy drinks and tobacco before the current end of time simulation went into full swing, there's a better than average chance that simple bartering will get you behind an actual crew served weapon. So you can finally mow down that annoying woodpecker who keeps putting holes into your soffit. It's a little known fact that all soldiers, active duty, reserve, and national guard are fueled by a cocktail of caffeine and nicotine. Without a dangerously high level of both coursing through their bloodstream, they'll eventually become too frustrated with the ridiculous commands of the officers appointed over them and will shut down into what I can only describe as a catatonic state. If you've ever seen a medic give an IV with a fat lip of Copenhagen and a stained 5 o'clock shadow, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You've undoubtedly been hoarding potato chips, ramen noodles, possibly some Girl Scout cookies. This is mostly because you don't want to shell out for those ridiculous prices of real MREs. While the average civilian or veteran with the case of nostalgia thinks that an MRE is a delight to the senses, much in the same way Eric loses control over several bodily functions at the site of a continental breakfast at a seedy hotel, soldiers agree everywhere that MREs are disgusting and will be willing to give one up in exchange for literally anything else that resembles food at a moment's notice. Excuse me. A dollar and nine cents worth of ramen noodles can be easily exchanged for an entire case of MREs with a hungry green suitor. If you happen to have some tortilla chips, a can of chilies, and a Velveeta mac and cheese bowl, you might get an entire pallet. 
This is the time to get yourself tactically squared away with all that shelf-stable chili mac and chicken breast, chunked and formed, of course, that you can stomach. Would you prefer to just avoid all contact with the National Guard? Well, that's easy. A little sacrifice and an uncomfortable social interaction will handle that right quick. Go up to the first gaggle of soldiers that you see and start asking them questions about their weapons, deployments, trucks, and equipment. Most of these guys only have a rudimentary understanding of the millions of dollars worth of equipment they are responsible for operating. By engaging these people with your inquisitive mind, you will receive one of two possible responses. You'll either get a bunch of jargon laced with incorrect information, or you'll be asked to give them space and let them work while they light up another cigarette and continue complaining about how much it sucks to be doing whatever it is they're actually supposed to be doing. The word will travel fast that you are what is tactically referred to as a chatty Cathy, and you will be avoided at all costs. The only person dumb enough to try to talk to you again is that stupid LT that didn't get the word. I mean, most lieutenants are too stupid and incompetent to actually do anything without an NCO holding their hand, so it's very unlikely that these people will be much of a problem for you. So that about wraps up our guide to making the best out of martial law. If you dislike this video, then you're probably that one guy in your guard unit that can almost max your PT test. But if you liked the video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button and share it around with your friends. Consider subscribing to the channel and checking out our Patreon page to stay up to date on current and future content. And if you feel like repping some Tundra swag, head on down into the link in the description below to our brand new store on Teespring. Thanks for watching, Tundra Nation, and you can now find us on Instagram at TundraTacticalMN.